All right. Hello. Welcome to Skype a Scientist Live. Today, we're joined uh, by Firefly scientist, Yelena. Uh, we're going to be, I, I'm just so excited because I have loved uh, what I call lightning bugs, uh, but many call fireflies. I called them bug lights when I was a kid. Uh, they've been my, one of my favorite uh, animals since I was little, um, catching them in Pennsylvania. So um, thank you so much for joining us today, Yelena. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So. Awesome. Uh, so everybody get your curiosity ready. We um, are really excited to hear all of your questions. Um, but first to, to start us off, Yelena's got some uh, stuff that she'd like to share with us before we launch into the Q&A. Yeah, so I will share my screen. So you guys can just see my slides, not my notes, right? We can see your, just your slides, yes. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a bit about fireflies. So fireflies, they are actually a family of beetles and beetles are the most diverse group of um, insects and actually organisms on the planet. So we have um, your rhinoceros beetle with the big horn and then a ladybug is actual, actually a beetle as well. And then up here in the corner, we have a firefly. And what makes a beetle a beetle is that the first set of wings are actually hardened and they fold over the back and protect it kind of like a shield. And then when the beetle wants to fly, it opens up that first set of wings and the second set is all folded under there and they fold out and it lets the beetle fly. Um, so that's how we know a firefly is a beetle. And fireflies, they can be found all over the world on every continent except Antarctica because it's too cold there for them. But what they really like is water environment so either a stream or a small pond nearby they don't necessarily live in the water some species do as um, babies but they just need it to be really moist so um, I'm in Georgia right now and so we get a lot of fireflies because it's very humid here and then you'll see even more fireflies in tropical areas closer to the equator but you can find some fireflies in dry environments usually you just find them close to like a stream or a pond um, so the firefly is a homometabolous insect, which means it undergoes complete metamorphosis. And so they start out as eggs and the eggs actually glow. And then they, after a couple months, the eggs hatch and they turn into larvae. And so this larvae kind of looks like a worm, but up here is the head and it's kind of hidden under that shield on top. And then down here is the light organ. So all, all larvae glow as well. And they glow because they have toxins in their body. So it's to warn predators not to eat me, kind of like brightly colored frogs or butterflies. And then we have um, the larvae turn into the pupal stage. And actually, oops, sorry. The larvae stay this way for at least a year, some species two or three years. And during this time, the larvae just eat, 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 and try to gather up as much nutrients and energy so that they can change into an adult. And so the in-between part is the pupil stage. At this point, they don't eat anything. They don't move at all. They just curl up and dig into the dirt or the leaves on the floor. And a lot of changes go on inside the body. So this is where their head changes a lot. Their eyes usually get really big and they grow their wings and their elytra. And then you have an adult firefly. So adult fireflies can look a lot there's a lot of different looks that they have, I guess. We call them morphologies. But again, they have the two elytra, which is those hardened set of wings. And under this, they have an abdomen. So you can see the end of their abdomen right there. And then this is called the pronotum. And in fireflies, all beetles have a pronotum. But in fireflies, it gets really big and it covers their head, kind of like a hood. And so, um, and what we can't see here is the light organ, but I'll show you that in a second. And so adult fireflies, they're only adults for a couple weeks to a couple months. And their only job at this point is really to make babies. So they find a mate, they make babies and they create eggs. Uh, one kind of cool thing about fireflies is that the females can look really different than the males. So in this first uh, picture we on the top row, this is the same species. A over here is a male and B is a female. So they look pretty much the same. The female is just a bit bigger and that's pretty typical in fireflies. The females tend to be bigger. But down here, this is the exact same species 
And so this is our male, looks like a normal firefly with the big head shield and the elytra, but this is the female of that species. And so she has the head shield, but this little um, black line on each side, those are actually her elytra. And so they've just been reduced, they're super small and she can't fly. And she almost kind of looks like a larva. And then the third form is what we call larva form. And they just, they're females that look like larvae. So they still pupate, but they don't have all those changes that a normal firefly would. And up here, we just see her head. And so those are her little um, mandibles or her, like her teeth, her claws for her teeth, and then her tiny little eyes right there. But yeah, so that's something that's really cool for me is that fireflies, the females can look really different from the males sometimes. All right, so you probably all know that fireflies, they flash, right? So think of like a nice summer night, you live in the Midwest or in the South, you see them out flashing in the trees or in the grass. And what they do is they actually are flashing to find a mate. And so what researchers have found out is really cool that each flash pattern is very specific to each different firefly species. So on the top here, Photinus corallus. So it's a very common firefly found all throughout North America, and it makes a J shape. So we call this the Big Dipper firefly, actually, because when it flashes, it kind of bounces down and comes back up. And as you can see, it almost makes like a J. And then for these other species, for example, this Photinus marginalis, it just makes little quick flashes. Um, but here for Tinus carolinus, it has six really quick flashes in a row and then it waits and six again. So the number of flashes, how long the flashes are and the space in between like a flash and a rest, that is all very specific to different firefly species. Um, but what a lot of people don't know, flash. so when they're larva or when they're babies, they all flash. But when, after they go through that pupil stage, some of them don't, they lose the ability to flash. So this is what a firefly looks like from its belly. So you have its head and these big eyes and then um, the thorax here. So one, two, three sets of legs and then we get to the abdomen. And the fireflies that flash, the light organ is on these last two abdominal segments and they can either take up the whole segment or sometimes they're just little dots like two or three dots on each segment. Um, but the ones that don't flash, of course, they don't have a light organ. So how do those ones find mates? So like many other insects, they use pheromones and pheromones are kind of like a perfume. They just smell really good to the firefly. And what happens is a female will sit around and she releases pheromones and they go through the air and the male will use his antenna to smell the pheromones. And then eventually, if he's ready to mate, he'll follow that kind of scent trail back and find the female and they'll mate. Um, so that kind of brings me to my research, but I want to tell you guys a little bit about me. So I started at uh, Brigham Young University. It's out in Utah. I actually studied as an exercise science major, but then I did a master's in biology there and I started studying stick insects. So this is a stick insect from Papua New Guinea and it's called the thorny devil and we can see it has all these big spines on the side so that's where it gets its name but I studied different stick insect body forms like the spiny ones the ones that look like leaves and a bunch of fun stuff like that and now I'm at the University of Georgia and my primary focus is firefly signaling and I focus on the morphology part of firefly signaling so we're talking about how fireflies kind of communicate with each other and more specifically for me, how they find mates. So we have, as you can see, two different, uh, well, four different species of fireflies here. On the left, these fireflies have really big antennae. And if you notice, they have kind of small eyes. And so these are actually fireflies that use pheromones to find mates, right? So the bigger their antennae, the better they're gonna be able to smell those pheromones. And then over here on the right, we have fireflies that use flashes to find mates. And if you notice their eyes are really big. So one of the things I'm doing is documenting the antennal size and the eye size of fireflies all around the world and to see kind of what patterns we see in the evolution or how those have changed over millions of years. And then on top of that, I wanna look even closer at the antennae. 
Uh, so I use a scanning electron microscope to look at really close up on the antennae. And what we see is little hair-like structures on their antennae. And so these hair-like structures are called sensilla. And sensilla all have unique functions based on their form. For example, these ones, they're kind of touch receptors or pressure receptors. So they can tell if the antenna is touching something or even if the wind is blowing really hard. Um, and then other ones can do things like smell. So these ones we think are pheromone receptors. Um, these ones as well, these are just my favorite because they look like little light bulbs. But they can also tell temperature or humidity, um, even kind of like taste, like a tongue. So there's lots of different things that sensilla can do. And we're finding that some fireflies have some types while other fireflies have other types. So there's a lot of diversity in the different sensilla morphotypes that we see. Um, and then just to kind of sum things up, I just want to say how fun it is to do research. Uh, I'm really lucky that I got to travel all over the world and collect bugs in some really cool places. So I just wanted to say keep that in mind if you ever want to do biological research. That's kind of one of the perks of it. So yeah, I guess I'm ready for questions. Thanks so much for sharing. That was super cool. I thought I was relatively familiar with fireflies having seen them like every summer of my life, but I did not know 80 to 90% of what you just taught us. So that was really, really cool. Uh, we got lots of questions here coming in and everybody in the audience, feel free to keep submitting more. Um, the first question uh, is how do fireflies make light? Oh, that's great. So they have um, an enzyme and a protein that they use, um, they just make it in their body, it's called luciferase and luciferin and then using oxygen and like ATP that we use to make energy they were able to make that light and one really cool thing about their light is it's very efficient and it doesn't produce a lot of heat so like if you think of like a lamp and a light bulb if that's on for a long time it gets really hot but fireflies they don't produce heat with their light so that's cool. that is super cool so how does a firefly like turn it turn the light on like like in, so I, I, in my graduate school work, I worked on uh, bobtail squid and we, I, they have this little bioluminescent bacteria that lives inside of them. And it's pretty much, they have the light on or they have the light off and fireflies do this fun flashing. So like, how do they turn it on? Yeah. So they, um, they like regulate the amount of oxygen that they take in through their body. Oh. And they, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, let's see. So this is from Gavin, one of our uh, devotees who's here all the time. Um, how do fireflies remember the other signals for faking mating, like honest versus dishonest signals? Ooh, that's a um, that's a great question. I don't know that um, we really know. So that brings up to so some of you may know there are some fireflies that can actually um, imitate other fireflies' signals. And so what those ones will do is they'll, they'll do the signal of a different species to pretend that it's a female so that a male will fly in and then she'll eat the male. Um, usually do that to get his toxins because she's not making toxins. So yeah, um, or like maybe some extra nutrients for egg production. But we're not really sure at this point like what, what it is that kind of hardwires in their brain, like this is my flash pattern versus that's a flash pattern, I don't know. Cool. Um, let's see, uh, Brielle would like to know, what do fireflies do when they meet, um, assuming that they wanna mate? Oh, yeah, so they use their antenna and they kind of touch each other around. We think that they have also um, kind of a chemical lining on that, that elytra or the shield on their back um, that is also kind of species specific so that they're able to smell. And so first they see the light and they're like, yeah, that's one of my people or one of my bugs. And then, um, they taste them almost to make sure. Yeah. That's cool. Um, awesome. So Brielle would also like to know which state normally has the most fireflies. Ooh, I'm going to go with probably Florida, but anywhere like in the Southeast would probably be good for fireflies. Cool. Um, let's see. So Birta asks, I heard that only either male or female fireflies fly. Uh, is that 
always true for all species and and is it always the males um so it's not always true for all species so the different forms that i showed you sometimes it's just the females that don't fly but the females the females with wings that look like a male they also can fly they'll fly around to find a new place to perch or whatever um so yeah it just kind of depends on the species but there cool. are definitely females that can fly cool um oh, sorry can i say one more thing that just made absolutely. me think so it is when it comes to mating the females usually don't fly around they're the ones sitting and so whether it's pheromones or light they will sit there and emit their pheromones or admit their light kind of stay in the same spot and then it's the males that are flying around at night flashing cool um so you showed us like there are lots of different um like body types morphologies in these females and you showed the one that kind of looks like the larva it was kind of a little scary looking with the mandibles uh mm -hmm. whenever we catch fireflies they never bite us it would that one bite i don't think so i've never been bit by a firefly that's definitely a bigger one um but as a like an adult female they're not really trying to eat anything and i think the mechanics of the way their their mouth parts when they get to be adults they get really big and almost to the point where they can't use them so i don't know if she could even really try to bite you but huh, cool that's a relief um emmett asks do fireflies only light up in certain seasons um so they're really only adults in like the warm seasons so in that case yes they're only adults and they're only lighting up when they're adults mm -hmm. to find mates. Um, you could find the larvae in like, if you listen are warm in the winter and they would still be lighting up. But yeah, as adults, only like spring and summer. Cool. Um, a couple of people wanted to know, what do fireflies eat? Uh, they eat a lot of snails and kind of just like small organisms. But yeah, they're really good for snails. Cool. Um, so Marcos would like to know, hi, I'm in uh, Tlaxcala, Mexico. Uh, there are, a, there's a small ecosystem about 10 acres where there are fireflies um, and the authorities have defined rules to visit. Um, and so, and there's a lot of tourism there. And so the question is, how can we preserve the ecosystem in a sustainable way? Um, yeah, so the best thing for fireflies is kind of to just keep it clean for one so that they like the clean water but then um minimize the amount of like vegetation destruction so um yeah they like the big overgrown areas here at least in the southeast we have a problem with people mowing their lawns too much and then that usually runs all the fireflies out but yeah um cool brielle would like to know are you studying a specific species of fireflies um, so I'm not, I am studying, I'm studying more how the fireflies are related to each other or how all the different types of morphology. So I get to study uh, quite a few species. That's cool. Cause that also means you get to travel all over the place, which is yeah. super fun. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Mrs. Moore's class would like to know uh, how far can fireflies see? Ooh, um, oh, I should know this question. So if they're looking for like the flashing light, um, they can see several meters out. In terms of like the rest of their vision, I'm not sure how well they actually see, but they're really good at distinguishing like that contrast between dark and then the yellow or green flash. Cool. Um, Aideny would like to know, do fireflies have friends? Uh, as far as we know, they don't, they're not really social. Some of them will kind of like, hang out in the same spot, but we think that's one because it might be a good place to get noticed. And then two, some insects will emit aggregation pheromones. And so instead of being to find a mate, they're just letting the other insects of that same species know like this is a safe place or something. So you might see a couple of them together, but they don't really interact other than that. Sounds good. Um, Emmett would like to know, what do they do during the day? Um most of them just like hang out under leaves and shady spots if they're the ones that are active at night um if they're the ones that don't flash they're active during the day and they'll fly around and hang out on leaves too <laughs> awesome um could fireflies be an indicator for light pollution yes they're actually a good indicator for light pollution yeah so when we have um you know a lot of city lights or 
you know, as we kind of move out into more rural places and have lights on all the time, that reduces the number of fireflies in that area. Cool. Kira would like to know, has there been any studies about the decrease in their populations? Um, I'm sure there are. That's not something I specialize, but I think in terms of light pollution, there have been a few. Yeah. And then probably other things like uh, habitat destruction. Mm -hmm. um, owl lover would like to know, do they migrate in the winter? They don't. So they spend the winter as larvae under the ground. So by the end of like summer, early fall, all the adults are dead. Um, and so the eggs are in the ground or the larvae are in the ground. Awesome. Um, fifth grade, Rebecca would like to know, do firefly antennas feel like whiskers? Um, a little bit, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> they, they're really, they're so small and light that you almost don't even feel them. But yeah, maybe like a whisker, or a little hair running across your hand. Cool. Um, Cora also in fifth grade would like to know what does that pheromone smell smell like for humans? Um, so it's something that I don't think we really detect as humans. But one thing is the firefly toxins, you can usually smell those. Um, and it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's maybe kind of like a soapy smell. I don't know. But um, yeah, if you catch a firefly and like are holding it for a while, and then you smell your hands, you know what that smells like. Yeah. I am gonna be sniffing fireflies this <laughs> summer for sure. I know when I um, pick up stink bugs, um, cause I have a friend who studies stink bugs. And so when I'm out playing with bugs, I, I pick them up and my hands always smell like cilantro after. And I, it's like <laughs> so pungent. Anyway, uh, sniffing bugs is something I've started doing more in, in the last couple of years cause I've been touching bugs more. Um, Okie doke, how long do fireflies live? Um, so the average is about a year, right? So they'll start from the eggs for a couple months, then they'll live for a full year as a larva, and then just a couple more months as a pupa and adult. So maybe like 18 months. Some of them are larva for like two or three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, Lee would like to know how many eggs do the girls lay? Ooh, um, so I think the average is probably like 15 to 30. A good amount, but nothing crazy. Nothing wild. Cool. Um, Salo would like to know, how high can a butterfly fly? Oh, I don't know. I've seen some pretty high butterflies. Yeah, I feel butterflies like are hard to high, keep. but I really don't know either. <laughs> um, when I, I see those big like, aggregations of the monarchs, I feel like they're pretty high up there. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask Phil Torres. I feel like he would know. He loves those butterflies. Um, Brielle would like to know, do the females live longer than males? Um, no, not really. But I will say the females, something cool about the females is they, well, and the males too, but they can mate multiple times. And so they'll have like different males eggs, fertilized eggs inside them. So they might, when they lay their eggs, they could be from two different dads, basically. Squid do the same thing. It's so cool. Uh, I love, I love that. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So if the big, I forget the word you used for like the big shield, oh, uh, the notum. that, uh, if that covers the light, how do we see the light if it's under a flap? Oh, okay. Oh, you, oh, so maybe the elytra. So the pronotum covers the head. Oh, I yeah, know the, the, the um, elytra is the other one. Wing covers. Yeah. Yeah. So the pronotum comes it's like on top, on the back of the firefly, right? But when you flip the firefly over, you can see the light organ. And so they're normally, the females will be flashing, um, sitting there, I guess, on the leaf. And they'll either like open their wings and they kind of like turn their abdomen upside down so that you can see it or like it will just reflect off the light. I mean, off the leaf that they're sitting on. And then because the males, when they're flying, they they kind of fly, instead of flying like this horizontal, they fly kind of like this at an angle. And so then they're flashing out that way. That does explain why they're so easy to catch because I can usually just like swipe them out of the air because their yeah. hands are just like right against my skin. Cool. Um, all right. What are their predators? Who eats fireflies? Uh, birds and lizards and frogs, like amphib small amphibians. But 
one kind of cool thing about their toxins too is that I don't know anecdotal stories um the toxins they slow your heart rate down or they slow animals heart rates down so like they have killed birds and frogs and stuff oh bats will also try to eat fireflies but yeah so like don't eat a firefly but those toxins they've actually modeled heart medication after those toxins that is used to like slow your heart rate cool yeah that's super cool um will fireflies flash for distress calls yes they will yeah so the um the larva they're basically when they flash that's automatically a distress call but sometimes when we're like handling them they're they're flashing and they're flashing different than like their mating call flash cool yeah a lot of times when i catch them i'll like very gently hold on to both their bottom and their top and that's what they like are flashing the most which is useful for instagram stories <laughs> uh, then i let them go don't hurt them um okay what i don't know this is i don't expect necessarily you to know the answer to this but uh mason from fifth grade would like to know what elements are in the smell that females use to mate Ooh, um i don't really know because we haven't identified any of the female pheromones actually um i just did a wrote a paper about pheromones and beetles and they used really big chemicals with i think a lot of oxygen and maybe some nitrogen and carbon, but yeah. <laughs> Those are usually the uh, the go to yeah. organic <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know either. Um, Ariana wants to know: Do females stay with a male for a period of time? Um, no, they really just kind of stay while they're mating. Um, so once he's done mating with her, he'll leave, and she might chill. She'll either like I said, mate with another male or she might just like take a break for a day or two until she lays her eggs and then she can mate again. Cool. Um, Mrs. Moore's class would like to know, do fireflies use camouflage? I can't really think of any that do. So most of them have some sort of bright coloring like orange or red or yellow on them somewhere because they are chemically defended. So yeah, I don't, I can't think of any cool, but the stick bugs that I used to study, they had great camouflage. <laughs> Super cool, yeah. Um, Jenna says from fifth grade would like to know how many species of firefly are there? There are about 2000 different species of fire. Whoa, that's a lot of fireflies. Um, and then from Max, why are there no fireflies in California? There are fireflies in California. Um, you just have to know where to look. I'm not trying to think of where I've seen, look in the mountains where there's water. That'd probably right. be the best place to look. So it's probably too dry, like dry in LA for fireflies? Yeah. Oh, because it's dry. Um, Rebecca wants to know, can fireflies swim? So some of, some species a lot, um, specifically some species in Asia that we know about our larva, they live their larval life in the water. And actually there are two known species of marine fireflies, one in like the Caribbean and one in the Pacific Islands. And they have been found like swimming actually under the water and like walking oh. around on the coral too, so. On the coral? Mm -hmm. Cool, that's super cool. There are also um, these little crustaceans called uh, I think sea fireflies, they live um, in Japan and they are not fireflies at all, but they would just same name. Um, and there's also a firefly squid um, that also glows. Um, so next time you need uh, firefly trivia, that might come in handy. Um, fifth grade Sophia wants to know how big can fireflies get? Um, goodness probably like an inch. I think maybe even those larva form right. females could be a little bit bigger, inch and a half. Natural. How, where do those kinds live? Those ones are mostly in Asia. Sweet, cool, man. I want to go bug catching other places. That sounds like so much fun. Um, let's see, so what do fireflies do when it rains? Um, they probably like, just go under the leaf litter or under a leaf, just keep dry, but yeah. Awesome. Um, do you fireflies attack other bugs if they come too close? I've never seen one. I haven't 
I don't think so. They're more of a flight than fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, Bianca would like to know, do they take care of their eggs or babies? They don't. Once they lay the eggs, they're out of there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, we've already answered whether fireflies bite and the answer is probably no. Um, let's see. Are there, oh, this is a great question from Nikki. Are there any endangered species of fireflies? Um, I can't think, I don't know specific ones. I actually just had an email asking about that. Um, some people were trying to like get more information on fireflies. So they were going to apply for this one species to be on the endangered species list. So cool. yes, I'm sure there are. Yeah. Especially I feel like insects are, well, and all animals across the board are having a tough time right now. So if there are 2000 species, probably somebody's not having a good time. Um, that's almost true of all animals right now, unfortunately. Um, Andrew would like to know, do you have a favorite species or type of firefly? Um, I, yeah, hmm, I like all of them, but so I'm, I'm a little nostalgic for there's a species. Um, we actually don't know what specific species it is, but it's from the genus Diaphanes and it's the first publication I've ever had. So the first time I got to go collecting, I went collecting um, in Rwanda, which is in Africa. And we found this cool firefly that came to a red light. We had these little red and green light traps out. Mm -hmm. And like fireflies aren't supposed to be able to see red light super well. Um, so, but they landed on the red light. And so anyway, that was back in 2014. And I've been back and people I work with have been back to Africa. We never found them. And then I went to Gabon in 2019 for a second time. And we put the light traps out again and we found them they were just flying into the light traps we got like 50 that night so wow. I, so that's kind of like my first research firefly experience and that's one of my favorites yep awesome so, okay when you go out at night and you're like okay a couple questions when you when is the best time to go find a firefly when you're out in the field um so we usually start around like sundown so here in the summer in the u.s around like 7.30, we'll go out to catch any that are early. Um, I th I feel like here in the US there, most of the ones we see are like the twilight ones. You do get ones when it's dark, but mm -hmm. when I'm like closer to the equator, it's usually like really dark by the time they come out. Cool. But of course okay. it gets darker earlier there too, so. Right, um, and what is your setup for catching insects? So it depends on what we're doing. So for fireflies, a lot of our research, we take uh, measurements of like the wavelength of light. So to like measure the color of light that they're giving off. So sometimes we'll like take a computer out there and set up our uh, spectrophotometer that measures the wavelength. Um, and one of us will kind of sit there all night and then we just walk out in the woods. Hopefully there's like a nice little trail or something we can walk on and we just swing our net and catch them. Cool. You don't, that's, that's super cool. Um, and how many countries have you been to insect collecting? Um, so I've been to um, um, three like foreign countries at this point. Yeah. I went awesome. to Gabon, Rwanda, and Vietnam. Super cool. Um, let's see. Owl lover wants to know, will cats eat fireflies? Um, I bet they would try. They might spit them out. They don't taste good. That's good. To know. <laughs> uh, um, how long, so when you catch your fireflies, do you let them go after or do you catch them and then bring them back to the lab? Uh, so most of the stuff we do is DNA work. So we'll catch them, um, either observe them for a while, take their light measurements, and then usually we put them in ethanol so we can extract their DNA later. Cool. Um, Gavin is, is, uh, living in Oman. Are there any species that you know of that live in Oman? I don't actually, I had a couple of years ago, me and one of my professors, we were trying to go to Oman, but we were like, I don't know of any fireflies out there. So cool. I don't know if you let, if you find some, let us know and we'll take a trip out there. <laughs> Gotta go to moist places in the dark <laughs> and then maybe <laughs> we'll find some. Awesome. Uh, so Andrew asks, are there any fireflies that are poisonous? So there are a bunch of toxic ones, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
yeah, I guess I think I had the, we have had this discussion with my friends a lot. What's what's toxic versus poisonous, right? Is poisonous when you like get it into your bloodstream or something? Right. I mean, if you ate one, that would be poisonous, right? You're ingesting it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is cool about the DNA of fireflies? Um, so what's cool, the, the reason we study DNA is so we can figure out how they're related to each other. And then by figuring out how they're related to each other, we can look at things like their eye size um, and it, how that's evolved over a million years. So one of the cool things that we've been able to figure out with firefly DNA is that the very first firefly actually didn't flash as an adult. So that first species of fireflies, it was um, the type that uses pheromones. Very cool. Um, where did you find the most unique fireflies? This is from Ms. Salazar, second and third graders. Um, where where have I found? I would say probably that one in Rwanda that I found since it, it goes to red light. Um, I think some of the like other places that there are really cool fireflies is also South America and I haven't been there yet, but there's some cool stuff down there. Awesome. Um, Gavin would like to know if people catch fireflies and then let them go, does that hurt the fireflies? Um, no, it shouldn't as long as, um, you don't have them for too long. So I know like some of us like to put them in jars and stuff when we're kids and take them in. I think they don't do well in captivity. So, um, as long as you're not like keeping them out of the wild for like a whole day or something, they should be fine. Yeah. Great. Um, Max wants to know how long does it take for fireflies to hatch from their eggs? Um, so kind of depends on the species, but usually like a couple months. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite a while. Um, very cool. Let's have a long time. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Um, Lynette wants to know if there will be a recording later. Yes, the, all of these sessions are always recorded and will be available at youtube.com slash Skype a Scientist. Um, Jeannie uh, would like to know, how did the first firefly invent uh, the ability to light up? Oh, okay. So we actually, there was just a paper that came out on that and I haven't read it yet, but um, we, we know that like basically the ancestors to fireflies. So there are actually other beetles that bioluminesce too. So like click beetles, um, they bioluminesce and there are these two families that are like, we call them sister group. They're the most closely related to fireflies called uh, fengodids or railroad worms you guys might know. Um, and then ragothalmidae is the other species. They're not very common. Um, but yeah, so like that ability to bioluminesce probably started before then. Um, but exactly like how that happened, kind of, I think, like trial and error type natural selection. <laughs> yeah. The super cool thing about bioluminescence is that it's evolved completely independently of its, of its, of other examples of bioluminescence, I think like 29 or 30 times in evolutionary history. So that just boggles me because what a strange thing to evolve. And but so many different animals have evolved it. So it's super important and useful. And so it's not, uh, we might think of it as being kind of out there and wild, but animals do it all the time uh, yeah. in all different places, especially in the ocean. Another cool thing about fireflies is that, um, right, we have the ones that flash and don't flash as adults. That's evolved independently multiple times. So, cool. um, right, so they're all still flashing as babies, as larvae, but whatever causes them to like need to flash as adults or end up flashing as adults, that's happened like six or seven times. That's super neat, cool. Um, Ariana would like to know approximately ballpark, how many fireflies do you think you've caught in your life? Oh, at least a thousand. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many squid I've caught. Not a thousand, but a lot. <laughs> um, let's see, can you keep fireflies in captivity for longer if you feed them? Um, so the I'll stay alive for like a day or two. So we try to, they're not really eating as adults. Like I said, um, we'll put like, if we want to keep them alive for a day or two, we'll put them in a jar and like not close it all the way. So there's still some air flowing. 
and then like put an apple or something or like a wet paper towel so they can get some moisture I don't think they're really eating the apple but they're like getting the juices from the apple there is a lab in um I'm pretty sure they're in China that has there's a species of firefly that is like in culture so they raise it in the lab awesome. um which is really cool and so they've seemed to figure out at least for that specific species like the magic formula to keep the firefly alive uh yeah getting an animal to go from the wild to in captivity is so hard um so i i can repeat it's such a challenge um okay so it we have been asking you questions rapid fire for like 25 minutes it's now 1 40. Um, there are still questions left to be answered, um, but uh, we try to keep these at 45 minutes. So we have two final questions that we like to ask everybody. The first is if you had the intention of the entire world um, and you could tell them one thing about fireflies, what would that be? Um, I would say try to like make yourself, make your house or wherever you live a firefly friendly environment. So a lot of like natural you know things that are good for pollinators actually are good for fireflies too so like Great. natural plants and stuff around maybe don't mow your grass every week which i know is hard for some of us but um yeah and just enjoy the fireflies <laughs> that's awesome okay you still have everybody's attention in the world and you can tell them one thing about anything it can be as like serious a uh, big picture or silly and insignificant as you like what would you tell them um the thing that comes to mind is i would say find what your passion is and figure out how to do it so um and it's okay if you don't find it right away like i was a pre-med major thought i was going to be an orthopedic surgeon and now here i am in grad school but the one thing that like keeps me going through grad school when it gets hard sometimes is i think to myself what else would i be doing and i can't pick a better answer so yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. What was there anything that you'd like to plug? Where can we find you on social media or other places on the internet? Um, let's see. I'm not great on social media. <laughs> I, I am on Twitter. I don't even I think my Twitter handles Pacheco Yelena. Um, I have do you have an Instagram, which is YM Pacheco. I do. I have a YouTube channel. There are two videos up so far. Um, yeah, I think it's just Yelena Pacheco on YouTube. You'll you'll find me. It'll be the first two videos about fireflies. So, great. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I had a heck of a lot of fun because I just love bugs so much. So, thanks for joining us. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us before we go? Uh, no. Thank you for coming and letting me talk to you guys. Awesome. Uh, this video will be up on YouTube uh, sometime this afternoon. Um housekeeping. Um, if you appreciate Skype a Scientist and what we do here, you can support our program. Our program is totally grassroots. We're all donor supported. Um, we're not funded by like the National Science Foundation or anything. We're just funded by people who uh, use the program. And so you can do that um, at patreon.com slash Skype a Scientist. You can support us for as little as $3 a month, or uh, you can donate just like a one-time donation to paypal.me slash Skype a Scientist. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. So uh, all those donations are tax deductible too. Um, other housekeeping on Friday. So at 1 p.m., we are going to be talking about uh, polymer recycling. So like recycling of uh, polymers, uh, which plastics and other things. Um, that'll be at 1 p.m. Uh, with Leslie Hamachi, uh, same, same time, same channel. Uh, right here. So we hope to see you then. Also a cool thing um, that one of our partners is working on, uh, uh, Black and Marine Science is the group. Every Friday, also at 1 p.m., they do something called BIMS Bites. So that's Black and Marine Science Bites. And they, uh, this week, are going to be talking about marine biodiversity. That's going to be happening at 1 p.m. as well. But they only last five minutes. So you can go to that and then come to ours afterward. Um, that's you can totally fit both in. Um, and they also have a YouTube channel that you can check out. Um, we included that in our email um, for this week. Uh, so you can subscribe to them as well. They're doing awesome work and you should totally check them out. And that's all I have for you. Uh, we hope to see you Friday. Uh, happy Inauguration Day. Uh, we'll see you um, Friday. Thanks again, Yelena. And thank you, Erin, for signing for us. Thank you. Bye.